sir. We are able to see the screen. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, I'll just you know uh, briefly introduce me and my company, what we are doing uh, before I get on to the session. So my name is uh, Vivek Sharanappa, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, Buy My AV uh, Technology Private Limited. It's a Bangalore-based startup wherein we are trying to build personal uh, mobility solutions for your last mile, first mile, and short mile commutes. And uh, in that journey, we are also trying to uh, you know build in the new technologies that are available in this space, uh, uh, be it in IoT solutions or uh, motor controllers or DC-DC converters, or including the motor manufacturing. So uh, that's uh, much about us, and we are like you know. Uh, we ha we are like one year old uh, in Bangalore, and uh, we have got a handful of uh, customer base in Bangalore. Where like you know we are uh, working with them uh, to help them to achieve their last mile commutes with uh, a clean green mode of transport. And for today, uh, the agenda will be like you know first we are going to talk on the design basically like you know if you want to design an e-mobility vehicle, what are the things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, and once we, uh, you know, uh, finish the discussion, I'll open it up for questions if anybody has. And each of the sections, I'll be, you know, closing it and, uh, you know, asking any questions uh, which come in. And finally, also we can have a Q&A session where, like, you know, as much as possible, I'll try to answer. And if, uh, you know, if you guys are going to put in some complex questions which I'm not able to answer, definitely I'll go back, uh, you know, uh, do some research on that and, uh, you know, ensure that uh, we get back to you with the answers. So EV motors, I'll not be touching too much on that because uh, since uh, Dr. Patil said most of them will be from uh, electronics and communication background, uh, I will not go in detail into the EV motors. Uh, but definitely, uh, I will be talking on other uh, you know items wherein like you know how an electronics engineer will play a role in, uh, for example, in region and braking. What is the electronics engineer role? Battery technology. What is an electronics engineer's role? V two G and V two V is something very new in the market. People are exploring this and people are trying to uh, bring in, uh, you know, a lot of uh, perspective for this. So I'll be talking on those things. And IoT is something which is uh, very hot in the market and everybody wants to know what is IoT and other things. Uh, in this presentation, we'll be uh, contexting it around the electric vehicles. And lastly, we'll be talking on micro mobility and uh, uh, upskilling, wherein, like, you know, I will be touch basing on different uh, uh, streams of engineering, wherein, like, you know, uh, what they need to do to uh, be skill ready to enter into the uh, uh, EV industry once you, like, you know, you're coming out of your colleges. And uh, finally, we'll be taking the QA uh, session. So let's get started. So first of all, um, you know, uh, I would uh, give a warm welcome for everyone who took out time uh, in this lockdown and in this, uh, you know, uh, situation to attend this. Yeah, you know, that's a big thing. That's the first big step you have taken. And thank you so much. Uh, I hope I'll not bore you guys for the next one hour. And uh, let's keep it more interactive. And, uh, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy the, you know, discussion as well. So uh, when we started our journey, like, you know, we considered uh, what should we do? Should we, like, you know, take an existing vehicle and modify it to work it for an EV or should we start from scratch? So when we were doing that, uh, what I understood is design plays a very key role in any product development, be it EV or any, any product that, uh, you know, tomorrow you're going to, uh, you know, join a company to do it uh, for R&D purpose or you're going to start up your own startups to do a product development. Design it plays a very important role and uh, especially if you're going to do it in the EV segment, uh, the points that I've uh, noted are the ones which will play a very important role. So if you put a tick mark to these things, right, then your design is going to come out. Uh, I would say like it, it, might, it might not meet Tesla, but definitely it's going to perform well in the market. So first is the segment, uh, you know, we need to uh, break it down. Which segment uh, am I going to design my uh, EV? Whether it's going to be two-wheeler, the three-wheeler or the four-wheeler or the heavy uh, utility vehicles. And uh, next comes your uh, battery chemistry, capacity, and voltage. So this is very, very important, and it plays a very crucial role. Uh, as uh, uh, since coming from the industry, I know, like you know, everybody asks, like, what is the range that I can go in this vehicle? Can I do a trip, Bangalore to Mysore trip? Can I do it? So uh, you know, a lot of these uh, questions get answered when we are going to pick up, like you know, what is the chemistry that we are going to use. 
whether we use lithium ion which is very uh, you know very much available and uh, in the industry most of them are on lithium ion based but you have futuristic uh, things coming in like which are like uh, ultra capacitors based uh, you know batteries and also like you know hydrogen is another thing which is picking up so all these things like you know you have to decide like when you start your design work and you have to uh, you know uh, put them in your uh, design so that you know you ensure like you know what exactly you are going to build and uh, the third one is the motor type which you are going to select for your uh, design based on the first two categories whether you want to have a, a max torque or max power or uh, longer range so all those things depends on what kind of uh, motor you want to use and basically even there uh, the pricing also matters right when, when, when somebody comes out in the market and wants to buy it if i say it's going to cost a bomb uh, and i say like you know it can it has got a max uh, uh, kilowatt hour and blah 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 people will not be really interested in selling out a lot of money on that so even those things also needs to be uh, considered when we do our design if you're doing if you're doing a design for a two-wheeler uh, should i like you know use a hub motor or should i go for a belt drive uh, you know you have to decide that based on the costing and other things that you are uh, targeting in your design and uh, uh, the fourth point is like you know very uh, you know interesting one top speed uh, you know zero to hundred how much time can i do it uh, most of the electric vehicles their initial torques are very high uh, the reason being like you know you have uh, especially if you are using a hub motor there is no wastage of uh, energy so you know you get a very good torque so but uh, it also like you know is a trade off uh, for example like you know if you want to achieve top speeds quickly then you are draining out a lot of uh, battery energy to push that power onto the wheel so uh, whether you want to give short range with the high power or you want to give a long range with low power all those things are also things which we need to consider when we are doing the design and range is uh, something like you know I, i've just put range because range is individual and uh, uh, it cannot be characterized uh, each one uh, has uh, their own perspective and uh, it's very difficult to you know satisfy all the uh, you know requirements so range is something like you know we have to define it for example i am designing a two wheeler with a lithium ion battery and i am using a 2 kilowatt motor and it does a top speed of 50 and you get a range of 100 kilometers so that's how uh, you know that's how the design specs are being uh, you know done when you have to do an ev and uh, the the last but one is the uh, battery type uh, i mean battery charging type that you want to design uh, for example you can see like tesla is the leader in the ev industry and uh, you can see like you know they have ac charge they have dc dc fast charge they have superchargers they have ultra chargers so you know all those things are uh, designed uh, when the vehicle was designed so that you know it can work with all these kinds of uh, uh, charging types available in the market and again uh, it depends like you know what kind of vehicle you are designing for example if you are doing a two wheeler i would not uh, uh, i would not want to have a high capacity uh, uh, you know supercharger available on that but uh, I would prefer a swap battery or I would prefer a DC DC fast charging available on the two wheeler. So all those things, uh, you know, needs to be put into your uh, design, design thought process. And finally, the high performance vehicles, if you are planning to do, for example, I want to build a, uh, a super bike or I want to build a, you know, car, which is like, you know, competing with uh, Tesla or any other things, then we should never consider, uh, you know, to use an available platform. It should always have its own native platform wherein you will start from the basics you know you will give to the design chassis you do the aerodynamics and everything uh, the reason being what happens when you don't use a native platform is uh, i can give you an example though i'm not against any of these companies like mahindra uh, everybody knows like you know they had uh, uh, you know verito as one of their uh, diesel cars and petrol cars so what they did is they just did not uh, use a native platform they went ahead and removed the engines and they bought the uh, Reva uh, kind of solution putting onto an uh, Everito. So you can see the range, uh, they were not able to achieve it beyond 100, 150 kilometers on that. The reason being like, you know, when, when these vehicles are designed, uh, uh, people, people uh, you know, have, uh, uh, especially like students like you, you put a lot of thought process on like, you know, how the aerodynamics are, how the controlling will happen. And all those things uh, goes into that design. So when you use a already designed one to uh, you know redo a stuff, it will not actually give you that efficient uh, output. So uh, if you're going for a high-end, uh, high-performance vehicles uh, designed to be done, then I would say 
you should always have it as a native platform. Though in two-wheeler segment, you know, it doesn't matter much until as you're building a super bike. So uh, that's on the uh, design part. So next I'll be moving on to the EV motors. So I'm just going to pause for a minute here if anybody has any questions on the design perspective of an EV. You can just unmute yourself and ask the question and you can mute back. Okay, so uh, we will move on to the uh, next topic which is on uh, EV motors. Uh, uh, I will not uh, talk in detail about this though uh, you know this presentation was done with uh, mechanical students uh, in mind. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, I will also tell you because as an EV ecosystem, you should always understand like, you know, what kind of motors are available, what they do, how they work and uh, you know, at least the basic things so that, you know, it, you know, like when you're, even when you're conversing with uh, somebody on the EV topic, you understand like, you know, when they talk about the motors. So uh, basically, uh, you know, worldwide, uh, if you take any of the EV side, you can categorize them into four types. Uh, though there might be many other types which uh, which are not very uh, you know feasible or not market ready or maybe in the prototype or somebody designed it and they left it there so uh, the most common one is the uh, brushless dc motor which is also called as uh, bldc which is widely used in the uh, in the two wheeler segment and the second one uh, which comes is the permanent magnet synchronous motor which is pmsm i think most of us would have heard about uh, Aether Energy. So uh, Aether Energy uses uh, uh, PMSM in the latest uh, version of the uh, vehicle that they're coming out. And the third one is a three phase uh, induction motor and uh, uh, our Tesla, you know, they use these kind of motors. And also Reva runs on these uh, three phase induction motor, which actually drives your uh, vehicles. Uh, the last, which is, uh, you know, switched reluctant motor, which is like, you know, very, very new in the market. And uh, people, it's very expensive solution as though. Uh, so uh, the adoption is not as high as we see it in the PS, PMSM or BLDC or in the uh, three phase induction motors. So in each of them, you can, uh, you know, I'll just highlight, uh, you know, what exactly it means. So in BLDC, what exactly happens is the, uh, the motor, uh, most of the cases, right, it sits on your back wheel. So uh, your efficiency is very, very high. Uh, I mean, the efficiency can go up to 95-98% based on, you know, how well your controllers are designed on that. But uh, definitely you get a very good uh, efficiency and also your initial torque that comes out of BLDC is always very high because there is no loss of uh, energy in this uh, um, BLDC motors. So again, there like, you know, you have two kinds, one is in runner and one is out runner. So if you take out runner, uh, uh, basically NDS eco motors or your... Uh, uh, light speed, uh, you know, uh, vehicles or even even by my EV uses the outer kind of motors in our BLDC. So what happens is this sits on the uh, on the back wheel inside the wheel, uh, and uh, you know this is uh, correct, uh, connected directly into your controller. So when the controller sends the signal to you know uh, uh, accelerate and uh, uh, you know sends the energy, it immediately without any loss you can see that you know the the torque is sent straight to the wheel. So that is that those are the types which are used in the out runner type uh, and next we have the in runner in runner is basically uh, you know very like you know you have some connection from the motor and you have a belt drive or uh, uh, you know you you have some mechanism built in so that you know you drive your wheel using that there is a small loss of power though because like you know you're transferring it to a belt drive and that belt drive is going to your wheel so uh, some of the examples that I can give you is like, you know, the first variant of uh, Aether Energy that came out used the in-runner uh, uh, BLDC motor, though the next version that they're coming up is with uh, uh, permanent magnet and Volta Automotive, Kinetic Green, uh, uh, all these people are using the, uh, you know, in-runner kind of motor, wherein they have some mechanism to, uh, you know, propel your uh, wheel, wherein they translate that energy coming into the motor back to the wheel. So it can be either belt drive or chain drive or, uh, you know, some mechanism uh, uh, if somebody has gone and uh, looked closely at the Bajaj uh, Chetak uh, electric, they have, they have done a new thing very really, like, you know, it sits along with the wheel, though it is not a hub motor, but sits along with the wheel and they have a shaft which drives the wheel. So there also your, uh, you know, the loss that happens is uh, minimized, which is uh, more in a belt drive or a chain drive kind of a vehicle. Uh, the next kind is the uh, PMSM, which is... Uh, 
which is little expensive and uh, many big companies or many big automotive uh, companies which have moved into the EV space are using it. Uh, some of the examples that I can quote uh, for these kind of motors is like uh, Nissan Leaf is a uh, very good uh, EV uh, product out of uh, a Nissan company. Uh, so they use the PMSN and uh, most of the hybrid vehicles which we see in the market today for example Toyota Prius or uh, Chevy Bolt or Ford Focus Electric. So they all use uh, you know they are all the uh, you know the legacy uh, uh, engines. But what they do is uh, up to certain uh, uh, certain time, for example, uh, by the time the vehicle reaches from 0 to 40 km speed, uh, they use uh, PMSM uh, motors to drive the vehicle, which will be drawing the energy from the battery packs. So uh, what happens is like, you know, for example, if, we, if you are driving it in a very dense traffic areas, you are actually not burning the fuel. So you are using your uh, PMSM motors to drive your vehicle and uh, you are consuming the battery uh, uh, charge which is there additionally on these uh, hybrid vehicles. So that's how these hybrid vehicles work and also uh, uh, many of the other uh, uh, BMW i3 and all these uh, people are using PMSM for their electric vehicles to be brought into the market. So that's, uh, that's on the PMSM motors and also Ether Energy is using uh, these motors on their uh, new variant of the 450H that they are uh, soon going to launch in Bangalore. Uh, the, third, the third type is the three phase induction motors. I think uh, somebody who is from an electrical background or I think even electronics you would have, uh, if you have studied about motors, induction motors are one of the oldest tried tested kind of a thing and uh, uh, basically you can see the torque versus speed is like amazing uh, uh, in a three phase induction motors. And this is the only reason why Tesla is using, uh, uh, you know, three-phase induction motor in all their vehicles uh, because of the efficiency rate very like, you know, after BLDC, which cannot be used on a four-wheeler, uh, three-phase induction motors are amazing efficiency very like you can get up to 92 to 95 percent and uh, people are trying to go beyond making it like 98, 99 percent. So the torque and speed uh, are, uh, uh, you, know, you know, if you see the graph, they are like, you know, in sync. So uh, you don't see any lag or uh, any uh, uh, disturbance when you accelerate your uh, electric vehicle, especially at Tesla. So uh, I, even your, uh, if somebody has driven Reva, like I have driven Reva, Reva also has a very, very good torque and very good initial uh, torque. I think it can even beat your uh, Mercedes uh, C-Class uh, uh, in 0 to 100 uh, drag race. So that's the power wherein comes in an induction motor because of the efficiency. So uh, fuel uh, based uh, uh, engines cannot have that much of efficiency because like you know there is a lag in there is a lag when they convert that fuel into the uh, energy. So uh, the, the, the other thing is like you know uh, even uh, Tata whatever is coming up with the new vehicles they are all uh, you know moving to the three phase induction motors because they understood that you know this has a very good uh, tried and tested model, uh, uh, you know, just as a motor if you take because it's there from ages and people have done research and improvised on it. And other thing is like, you know, uh, uh, the efficiency is good. So you can always, you know, uh, have a longer range uh, based on, uh, you know, your speeds and other things. So uh, Tata's uh, are also moving and I think Mahindra is also uh, uh, moving with the new platforms wherein they are going to build native uh, uh, vehicles using these uh, three phase induction motors. So uh, that's on the, you know, the induction motors and uh, the last one is the switched reluctant motors. So, so these are basically an advanced version of uh, uh, PMSM and uh, uh, the, uh, the research uh, papers say that, you know, wherever your PMSM is applicable that can be, uh, you know, replaced with an uh, switched reluctance motors. Uh, but uh, it is a little expensive because it is not still uh, in the market and not productized and uh, commercial availability is also not uh, good. So people are, you know, uh, just trying out to see whether uh, PMSM can be replaced it or not. So only thing what happens when any uh, motors, if you want to switch from anything else is, the efficiency should be uh, high and uh, your performance should be better than what you have currently. And also uh, the reliability, uh, for example, in three phase induction, when uh, the, the torque versus speed is like, you know, very reliable. 95% efficiency can be achieved. So if that is achieved, then people will start moving to this. So why I'm telling all these things is so when you when you start designing right based on your application that you're going to do two wheeler, three wheeler, four wheeler or a heavy 
or a high speed vehicle. So all these things can be put into your uh, thought process though you might not design this. You might say like you know uh, should we you know be using TMSM or should we use a three phase induction or should we be using a SRM kind of a motor. So that's uh, that's pretty much on the uh, on the motor side. So I'll just stop here for a minute to see if you have any questions or else I'll be going next to the region and breaking uh, topic. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Okay, so uh, next is an interesting uh, topic. I think we would have never heard of uh, regenerative braking system in uh, in IC engines earlier. Very like you know when when uh, when I apply my brakes, uh, uh, you know I'm not going to generate. Uh, I'm I actually in in the current IC engines right. We are losing out on that energy. So why do you think when we drive for long hours on the cars or bikes by applying brakes and other things, uh, you know the whole vehicle gets heated up? That is because you know you are you are releasing that uh, energy when you do your braking, which is not being utilized back into your vehicle. So uh, it's basically uh, you know it's a physics. Uh, you know very like we all have learned from our uh, school, college, and even in engineering that you know energy cannot be destroyed. You can uh, you know you can create it, but you can never destroy it. It has to move somewhere. Uh, so uh, only way in uh, current IC engines it's happening is it's going as a heat uh, dissipation. Whereas in um, uh, whereas in uh, electric vehicles, what happens is um, uh, I'll take you know electronics as an uh, as a discipline. So when when any of us like uh, say let us assume we design a two wheeler and we have a motor decider and we do okay let's start uh, you know building the chassis and chassis is built so now we need to drive it. So to drive it right we have to design a controller. Controller is like uh, you know the heart of your system. So controllers are basically uh, you know power electronics designed by electronics engineers wherein like you know you say when somebody applies a brake on the system uh, on the vehicle so whatever the energy is uh, you know generated right let's not dissipate it as heat let's capture that back and we'll try to put it back into our battery packs because uh, lithium ion battery packs as an example if i take you always charge them right and you discharge it so uh, that's how that's how the system works so what happens when you design your controller is you can you can always configure your uh, you know your controller in such a way that whenever somebody applies the brake whatever the energy is dissipated out of it let's take back this energy and charge whatever possible of the uh, batteries available in our vehicle. So that way what happens is like you know you are you are not losing out on the energy you are trying to use that back. So when I say like you know you are going to use that back it doesn't mean like you know uh, if if I if I apply my brakes I am going to get a longer range no uh, uh, there is some math for that which you need to work out when you design your controllers and all but at least you know 10 percent of it can be achieved wherein like you know for example i drive an uh, uphill uh, and my vehicle uh, range is 100 kilometers and uphill is like 50 kilometers if i go 50 and when i come back i'm just applying the brakes i should be able to get 110 kilometers as my range wherein like you know the 10 additional is coming from my regenerative braking system wherein like you know we are trying to capture that energy that is generated out when I apply the brakes and we are putting that back into our battery packs by charging recharging them. So that's uh, that's how the you know region works. So there are two parameters mainly uh, which you know any time you design it you have to etch this in your brain and tell only two parameters that I need to think when I do my regenerative is one is the efficiency and the effectiveness. So effectiveness is something which uh, it is very difficult to gauge because uh, the way I drive and the way Dr. Patil drives or the way uh, uh, Jagdish drives uh, varies uh, varies from person to person. So you cannot tell that effectiveness can be measured. But efficiency is always uh, you know a measurable uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know unit which can be put into our uh, design effort when we do that. So uh, just going uh, going in detail like you know what exactly happens is. Efficiency, yes, I agree. Like you know, we cannot do it 100% efficient. Uh, so uh, it doesn't work that way. I mean, till date, nobody has uh, designed anything which is like 100% efficient. So, but there is a, uh, but there is a possibility that we can achieve up to, uh, you know, 60 to 70% of the efficiency can be achieved by, uh, you know, when we do our design, when we do the right uh, batteries and the right controllers are configured and the right motor is uh, chosen and even the vehicle dynamics are working along with it. So that makes you that makes your vehicle 60 to 70 percent efficient. 
So now when, uh, now when we, when we uh, you know, calculate the region, right, generally the loss is around you know, uh, uh, 10 to 20 percent of the energy uh, in an IC engine. So here what we do is we try to capture that back into our vehicles. So now I think Tesla is the one which has achieved a great, uh, you know, great efficiency in capturing this, uh, uh, this regenerative thing and others are like, you know, maybe at 40, 50 or 35 percent. But those guys have done, uh, you know, done a good uh, thing uh, in capturing it. But that doesn't mean like, you know, your range goes in the same percentage. So for example, uh, if my car or bike does 100 miles, uh, if I have a 70% uh, 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 regenerative uh, into my system, that doesn't mean I'll get a 170 miles uh, in the range. It is, uh, it is like, you know, 70% of it is being captured back into your system. So very like, you know, there can be a loss still, which will uh, not put that whole energy back into your battery packs, but it can be, you know, uh, it can, it can help you to capture that back and uh, you might achieve around 30% uh, uh, efficiency of increasing your range. Uh, I think in uh, in Tesla's case, they have achieved 35% uh, in increasing the efficiency of the range based on the uh, regenerative system that they have designed. But now effectiveness is something like, you know, uh, uh, I might get 5%, somebody might get 50%. So worst case scenario is 5%, best case scenario is 50%. So uh, just taking the same example, if a vehicle lead does 100 miles on a full battery charge, if in a worst case uh, I drive and my regenerative is uh, uh, you know used, I might get 105 miles. But in a best case scenario, I might get around 100, uh, uh, you know, uh, 32 miles or uh, more than that based on my driving conditions. So uh, that's uh, that's how it is done. And all these things are like you know uh, just to add to it. It is not. It cannot be. This data cannot be derived uh, in day one. This is basically like, you know, you start capturing uh, uh, these regenerative data because it is coming back to your controller. So how many times a person applied the brakes? Where did he apply the brakes? And uh, was he like, you know, uh, uh, very harsh on the brake or was he very mild on the brake? Or when he was in the downhill, was he like, you know, did he keep his legs on his uh, uh, brake so that it was activated? So all this data can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, data can be collected in your controller. So when you design your controller, it's up to you, like, you know, how efficiently you want to do it. Uh, I spoke in the last slide. So uh, all this information can be captured and later on you can derive, hey, one year, if 10,000 of my uh, two wheelers are driven on the road, I can tell you exactly what will be my regenerative uh, braking system in worst case and best case scenario. And that's what Tesla or anybody else is doing. And even we are also doing it wearing like, you know, we are capturing all this information and uh, trying to collate and see like how people are driving it. Uh, it's very bad in two wheelers because uh, somebody driving a Honda Activa, uh, we have observed that they are used to holding the uh, brake lever and uh, driving their vehicles, though it is not required. But in uh, electric vehicles, uh, that is a very bad, uh, you know, the effectiveness is like, you know, very bad. You're holding the brake and once you hold your brake, the uh, acceleration system is disengaged and uh, it will not accelerate. So people will think like, you know, I'm trying to accelerate the vehicle is not moving so all these things are the things which we need to uh, you know understand when you do our uh, controller design so uh, you know that's how the region uh, works and it's a very very crucial and important aspect of your uh, vehicle so uh, i've just you know depicted them in the in the two wheeler so you can see like you know what exactly happens is when uh, when somebody applies the brake right the green thing is your regenerative charging which will take that back to your charge uh, to char recharge your battery and when you accelerate the uh, you know the same uh, battery energy is being pushed onto your uh, uh, pushed onto your uh, motor or which drives the wheel and the uh, same thing works in uh, four wheelers four wheelers you know it can be more efficient because you have uh, you know uh, four wheels running there and when you apply the brakes the amount of energy that gets generated is like, you know, a little large, but again, uh, you know, the battery packs are also large. So accordingly it gets, uh, you know, uh, uh, adjusted, but uh, all these things are based on the design, how well you do it in your uh, system. So uh, that's pretty much on the uh, region system. So uh, we are just moving to the uh, battery technology and uh, I'll just stop here for a minute to take any questions or we can move it to the last part.
Okay, so uh, next is the uh, the battery technology, um, which is a very very uh, you know crucial and important and uh, 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 very critical uh, in the in the electric vehicles. It's like you know I'll say like your fuel tank. So uh, uh, in the in the battery technology, right? Like we have so many so many things available in the market. For example, uh, lithium ion is the very commonly used in today's world. Uh, we have lithium polymer, we have lead acid which was used uh, a few uh, few years earlier when they first came up with uh, electric vehicles and we have uh, you know nickel uh, metal hydride which is very uh, uh, you know the application in EV is like very less and amongst all these things right the last part is your battery management system which is like you know the heart of your uh, battery pack. So this is the guy who is going to drive your uh, you know how the discharge is happening how the temperature is there of the vehicle i mean the cells in the battery pack whether any load balancing is happening whether somebody is misbehaving in the battery pack so all these things are in the battery management system and uh, just uh, taking uh, electronic students uh, background uh, most of the bms uh, uh, designs are done by uh, you know electronic students because again they like you know you have use a lot of sensors use a lot of uh, ICs and uh, other informations to you know collect all the information from these battery packs and then push it back to your controller. So now you can see like you know uh, BMS and your controller are in continuous engagement uh, with data transfer like you know understanding like you know how the vehicle dynamics are working. So uh, you can see in the EV ecosystem uh, the controller and BMS where the electronic students play a major role is very important in the whole EV system. So when something needs to be designed from scratch, if uh, uh, if the design is good, uh, uh, that's not enough. Y your uh, controller should be efficient, and your battery management should be like you know, uh, giving you the every every information that is required to the controller to put it back to the uh, system. For example, what is the range that you are getting? Uh, uh, as soon as you sit on the vehicle, it should tell you like you know the next. Uh, 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 you can drive for next 20 kilometers or 40 kilometers. So all this information comes from your uh, uh, battery management system. So now uh, the uh, the different uh, battery types, uh, though I mentioned, uh, I have not mentioned about uh, the new things that are happening. So there's something called as ultra capacitors, which are uh, coming in. Uh, they are like you know high efficiency and high discharge rate. So uh, I can just give an example, like you know there is one company which is based out of Bangalore who are. Uh, who have built a solution for uh, uh, you know uh, three wheelers, uh, basically the the luggage autos. So with the ultra capacitors, uh, it can pull a load of one ton, and it can drive at a speed of fifty kilometers. And uh, the recharge time of an ultra capacitor is like you know less than five minutes. So within five minutes, uh, you know you can recharge your ultra capacitor batteries. So now uh, this all looks fascinating, right? But when you look at uh, the uh, from an engineering perspective, right? So uh, there, like you know, your battery management system should be very, very efficient uh, to handle all those things. How much of the power needs to be released, and when you charge it, like you know, should I stop now the charging? Uh, should I do the cell balancing? Is somebody bad in this uh, battery pack uh, because of whom he is like you know uh, uh, misbehaving or the ranges are coming down? All these things are taken care from the battery management system. And it plays a very important uh, crucial role so uh, uh, since we bought the battery management system uh, we have a college in Bangalore who are working with us as uh, on internship and for their final year project so uh, they have taken the cell balancing uh, in the battery management system for larger packs so uh, uh, I'll just give an example like what happens so uh, if you take a small uh, capacity of uh, 60 volt uh, 20 amps battery pack right so the lithium-ion cells are like around 100 plus uh, battery cells sitting there in that battery pack. So now each one is having a you know output of 3.7 volt and uh, current varies based on what uh, categories that you have chosen. So now out of these 100 guys right even if one guy is bad he is going to bring down all the other 199 people. So the BMS is the one which plays an important uh, role in identifying who is that bad guy sitting there amongst the 100 people and tell that you know this uh, this pack is bad because of this guy. So what happens is when the battery packs are built currently, uh, there is no mechanism to go ahead and replace them individually because the pack is built. So uh, these students are trying to see if we can have a mechanism where like, you know, 
the bad guy can be removed and the new guy put in his place who will start behaving uh, normally along with all the other people so uh, so that's one of the project that there which is very interesting and uh, 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 you know very uh, uh, i think they got selected in the at the vtu level also they had uh, done some presentations and all so what i'm trying to emphasize here is uh, you know the battery management system is very crucial in the ev uh, apart from the controller design so you can see like you know each one plays a very important role in the whole ev system so uh, uh, now comparing it with the automotive industry uh, ev is revolutionizing things so uh, ev is revolutionizing and i'll also talk when we talk about the upskilling like you know how all of us need to work together uh, in in synonymous for example if we take today's world of uh, ic engine two wheelers right uh, the electronic students might not play very important role there uh, compared to an uh, you know automobile engineer or a design engineer who comes from a you know production background and has done some design courses but in ev space you can see like you know electronic students play a very very important crucial role so even if the design is good and they have selected the right motors the bms and your controller designs play a very very crucial role and uh, just to highlight it uh, tesla has open sourced all of their patent papers that they have done on their uh, you know ev technology so you guys can go and you know uh, search about like you know how they have done the controller design or the battery packs how they have laid them out how the bms has been developed and a lot of information is available for you to go and grab it so uh, it it tells that you know uh, uh, you guys play a very important role in the uh, in the ev ecosystem so uh, uh, that's on that so uh, i've also like you know put like you know what exactly these lithium ion batteries mean what is their density what is their capacities how fast they discharge and how uh, which one is more efficient in that so uh, these are all the information like you know once this presentation is made available you can always come back and refer to it hey we are building a small uh, uh, let us say a cycle a bicycle which can be used within the campus so what kind of batteries should we use and which is more viable very like you know will not do more than uh, 10 15 kilometers within the campus so uh, when you when you are doing such designs right so this will help you to you know pick up what batteries are uh, you know viable for you to you know go ahead and uh, make the choice though uh, in today's world lithium ion is uh, a number one preferred and uh, lithium polymer are little uh, heavier uh, i mean in terms of size and uh, bulkiness but they are more uh, safe and reliable uh, and also okay i just forgot to mention another uh, very very important uh, thing so when you do your bms uh, design right there is something called as thermal runaway Uh, which fires uh, uh, you know which triggers the vehicle fire and explosions that have happened even even tesla has experienced uh, vehicle fires so thermal runaway is something which your bms is the guy who is monitoring it so how well you design it and how well you cut off everything from the vehicle or uh, you know cut off the uh, you know communication between the controller and other things and the vehicle so it, it all it all uh, it all come boils down to like you know how the electronic students are doing that so that is um, you know that plays a very crucial role and in today's world you can see like you know people are improvising on this bms and bms a uh, lot of inventions are, are being done here and there is a lot of scope because something new in the industry if you go back to automotive or automobile industry right uh, if i want to do a patent there uh, i think i'll have to spend another 10 15 20 years to do that but here this is something new in the market and uh, if you get an idea just pick it up speak to your professors and uh, do some research and go back and see all the patents that are being done in the bms technology and if you have a unique path that you are taking then uh, you know you have a scope for doing it so uh, lead acid is something which has been already uh, you know uh, most of the uh, three wheelers they still use uh, lead acid but slowly they are also moving to uh, uh, you know lithium ion because of the efficiency and uh, a lot of other things because lead acid uh, they are not very reliable Uh, you know any time they can uh, uh, you know do a discharge and they'll be out of charge so you cannot uh, gauge your range and everything very accurately uh, for a long time in uh, uh, lead acid types of batteries and bms as i said uh, you know uh, whatever we discussed like you know the name is self explanatory self you know it's it's the heart of the system it's it uh, it drives everything on your uh, vehicle you know state of charge you take or any failures you take or your temperature management system or your adc or anything uh, or even like you know for example let us say uh, i have uh, designed my uh, vehicle for only ac charge type 
Now I go to a public charging station and I don't know whether they are having AC, AC, AC charge type or they are having DC, DC or it is a DC fast charger. So now BMS is the one which will, uh, you know, uh, adhere to some of the standards and uh, if somebody puts a, uh, a different kind of a uh, charger into my system or there is any issue coming out of it, right, uh, it, it is the one which is going to cut off uh, things there. Uh, so the BMS design plays a very uh, crucial role in doing that. And also for all the telematics that we are talking of, like for example, in next one year, I want to see how many vehicles uh, that we have deployed in Bangalore city had regenerated being done. So BMS is the one who's going to give that back to you because whenever regenerative is happening, you're getting back that charge back. And uh, immediately, you know, when, when that uh, charge is being used for, uh, you know, propelling your vehicle, you're uh, you know, discharging it. So all this information comes from your BMS. So uh, it plays a very, uh, you know, very, very important role in uh, collecting the telematics of the overall vehicle. And also when you do a battery swap kind of a, a design, there again your BMS plays a role. For example, uh, what happens if an unknown battery type is put onto my vehicle? My BMS is the one which is going to send a signal to the controller telling that, okay, hey, I'm, I'm actually a partner. So now we can uh, you know, work together. So if somebody puts a different kind of a battery pack onto a vehicle which has got a swap battery, BMS is the one who's going to communicate. So when the communication doesn't come to your controller, controller will say like, you know, hey, this battery doesn't belong to me and you put a different battery. So all these things are going to go into your design uh, per se. So uh, that's uh, pretty much on the battery technology and other things. So I'll just stop here for a minute before we go to a very interesting topic of V2G and uh, V2V. So uh, uh, V2G and V2V are like very new into the EV uh, space uh, and I, I don't know you guys would have already heard about it because you guys are more up to date than us. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's a very very interesting topic and uh, uh, V2G is like you know there are two things one is vehicle to grid and uh, 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 very like you know what exactly happens is how the systems are getting designed is for example. I come back home in the evening, I put my uh, vehicle for charge. Now, this is a Friday evening, tomorrow I don't have uh, office to go or I don't have anything to do because of the lockdown, I'm at home. But uh, my vehicle had 100% uh, charge available because at work or whatever the last location I went, I fully charged my vehicle and I just drove like 5 kilometers. So now my vehicle is having 95% of the charge available on my vehicle. So now, uh, as we discussed in the earlier stage, energy, uh, uh, you know, it has to move from one place to other place. You cannot destroy it, right? So in V2G concept, what happens is when I come back home, I can always tell, hey, uh, I have got 95% of a battery and I don't think I'll be uh, stepping out in the uh, weekend because I know uh, there is a lockdown and other things are happening. So why not push this energy back to the grid? Or why not push this energy back to my home to do my lighting wherein I will not draw power from the grid. And if that is suffice, uh, let it also push it back to the grid. So V2G is a new, uh, you know, new technology which is coming into the market wherein like, you know, you can share your energy. So that, you know, like you don't waste that energy by charging every day to 100% of your vehicle. Uh, you know, you put it back to the grid and grid can distribute it to wherever there is a requirement of the, of the power, right? So uh, that's, uh, that's also going to help, you know, your coal generation of your electricity can be reduced because you're, you just assume like, you know, like uh, 500 people putting their vehicles back to grid because they don't want to use it for the next two days and everybody has got like 80% of their efficiency. So uh, just to take a small quote from, uh, I think uh, most of us would have watched this uh, movie. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you recall the uh, scene from Three Idiots, right? So uh, there is one instance in the marriage hall where like he says like you know we are doing uh, a converter where it will draw all the energy from the vehicles and we can charge using that charge we can power up all the you know electricity whatever is required. So that is basically a V2G concept. So now uh, uh, talking on V2G in perspective of electronics you know there is a lot of electronics that needs to be designed developed to make this uh, you know uh, working in the real world. 
for example, what is the voltage that is coming from my vehicle? What is the output he is giving? Whether he is giving 240 or 60 or uh, you know what is the output that is coming? He is going to definitely give me a DC DC. So now I should have a uh, mechanism to convert that back. So now will I first use it at my home or will I straight away give it to the grid? So uh, all these things are you know designed, developed, implemented by electronic students, electronic engineers because you have to design those systems and that is basically electronics. You have to see like okay this is coming in and uh, I need to have all the uh, necessity ICs and uh, uh, you know boards designed which will ensure that you know this will not falter the systems when it goes out of uh, my vehicle into the V2G unit. So uh, you know you can see that you know what amount of uh, you know important role you guys will be playing once you know come out of your college and entering into the industry. So this is on the uh, on the V2G. Uh, next in the V2V uh, we have two modes one is uh, you know vehicle to vehicle charge and vehicle to vehicle communication. So uh, uh, this is a very very interesting thing and uh, you know uh, one of it will you know, actually solve your range anxiety. So uh, you know let's take the first uh, first thing which is vehicle to vehicle charge. So what exactly happens in this uh, in this part is uh, for example, uh, I am driving my car and uh, you know I went to a mall or I went to a, uh, I went to Mysore for example, let us say. Uh, for example, in today's world, uh, Hyundai Kona EV, I can drive to uh, Mysore and I think I cannot drive back to Bangalore. I need to charge it somewhere. So uh, what happens is there is an anxiety, right? As soon as I reach Mysore, my first thought will be like, you know, where do I charge my car first before I do anything else? With V2V, what happens is I don't have to worry about that. So all that I need to worry is like, you know, when I'm actually running, going to run out of power, I need to see is there any vehicle near to me which can dissipate, uh, you know, charge to me so that I can go back to Bangalore. So that is called V2, uh, uh, you know, V2V, very vehicle to vehicle charge, very like from one vehicle which has got more energy, it will pass on that energy to another vehicle which is low on energy. That way, like what happens is this is going to be super fast. You don't have to wait for that uh, few hours or uh, to do it because like how well you design your uh, uh, connectivity is right DC DC fast charge anyway it will be a DC DC uh, uh, charging so DC DCs are always fast so now how efficiently you will design that V2 uh, V amongst your vehicles so it can uh, help people uh, as though like you know they go to a fuel station right they just go five ten minutes they have a uh, energy in their car which can bring them back to their homes so that's the you know V2V charge that we are uh, talking about and uh, uh, this is a concept which uh, which people are trying out and I think Tesla is also trying out very like you know one Tesla can give it to another Tesla and uh, based on the type of chargers that these vehicles use you can always have uh, uh, you know a Tesla giving their power to a Hyundai Kona or Hyundai Kona giving it to a uh, Mahindra Everito or things like that. So that's on the V2V uh, charge. So this will, the, what, what exactly happens is the energy is not stored somewhere and lying there. It will get utilized and it keeps moving around. And also the time the, that is required for people to use the EV to uh, move around is going to reduce because of this V2V uh, thing. So now when we talk of V2V, right, so there is a lot of technology that needs to go into this one. So you need to have a system designed which can communicate with your, uh, you know, which is the nearest vehicle available for me. And now when you design your, uh, uh, like if you if you remember the first slide which I showed on the design, we talked about like what is the charging that we're going to do. Is my car designed to handle V2V for the future? Yes, it is designed. So people can just use that uh, charging mechanism uh, to, you know, charge from one vehicle to the other one. So now the communication is the next one, which is vehicle to vehicle communication. So uh, this is again, uh, uh, you know, this is again at a uh, very initial stage wherein uh, things are happening. Uh, mostly this is like uh, uh, in futuristic uh, things in mind. For example, if everything becomes autonomous, where like you, know, you have the cars driving on their own, uh, how, will, how will we, uh, you know, handle all these things? So autopilot is there now, but uh, what happens if uh, he wants to communicate with the other vehicles around him? So V2V communication is the channel which will help them to do that. So if if I'm driving my uh, car and uh, I'm running low on charge, V2V will communicate to see who is the nearby vehicle which is available with uh, more charge available and uh, who is ready to you know dissipate that uh, energy to me. 
So that will start, that will establish a uh, you know connection with that vehicle and it will start communicating telling that, hey, I'm low on charge. I need the charge, so let's next, uh, you know, wherever the next uh, available stop is there, we'll charge and we'll just, you know, push that energy to my vehicle so that I can continue my uh, journey. And uh, the next thing is uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, the driving behaviors of people and uh, accidents, braking, stability, uh, you know, how much you have traveled, all these things, right? So all these communications can be done using the V2V communication. When everybody, every vehicle is communicating and it can avoid your road accidents. It can, um, you know, avoid the driver fatigueness because it knows like, you know, he has driven for a long time. He needs to really rest. So the vehicle automatically will, you know, uh, uh, bring down to a halt telling that, you know, you need to really rest because you have, you have been driving for a long hours. So all these things are uh, coming into your V2V uh, uh, communication. So there again, like, you know, you can see that uh, though most of it is driven by uh, software, if the vehicle needs to send his GPS positioning, uh, it should be an electronic student who has put a GPS in that and who's communicating with the satellites and sending the coordinates. Then only like, you know, the software can handle that data and tell it it's doing. So when I apply my brake, you should have a sensor on the vehicle which will take that information and send it back to the cloud for the software guys to process it. So you can see like, you know, it plays a very, very important role um, uh, in even the V2 G and V2V, which are like, you know, very uh, new to the market and uh, are going to be uh, in big time in the down the lane. So uh, just to depict that, whatever we discussed, you can see V2V, the left picture in the charge. Uh, for example, somebody has put for the public charging and I am running low on charge. I don't have to ask him to remove his vehicle. All that I need to do is I just go and plug to him so that, you know, I also get start charging without him having to remove his vehicle. So that's the beauty of V2V charging mechanism. So what happens is the guy who has parked it here uh, and uh, sitting somewhere in a restaurant or at his home or in office or in a call, he'll not be disturbed or he'll not be asked like, you know, to come and remove his vehicle because his vehicle is already charged. So I can just plug to his car and uh, you know, start charging my vehicle. So that's the concept of uh, V2V. And in the communication, you can see on the right side, picture depicting like, you know, where all the vehicles are communicating and interacting and a lot of information is coming to everybody so that you know to avoid any kind of accidents or driver fatigue or you know using the you know, energy available on these evs to do it so uh, so it's a very very good concept and uh, uh, as i can see and i have been working I, I know like you know electronic students play a very crucial role in uh, in, in these uh, places as well so that's on the v2v and v2g topic so I'll just pause here for a minute and I think we're running out of time. Uh, uh, Jagdish, can we like, you know, still go ahead? Uh, I think I'll need another 15, 20 minutes. Uh, yes, sir, you can, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you. So uh, let's uh, touch on the internet of things, which is the, uh, you know, very interesting and uh, very fascinating topic. Uh, very fascinating because like, you know, you can do anything and everything with internet of things. I'll just quote one example. So uh, I have a four-year-old son who is, uh, you know, very naughty now. So when he was born, right, uh, I had an issue. Uh, whenever he's crying, uh, either me or my wife both are working. We used to be on calls or something, and we were like, you know, not knowing that he's, you know, crying or cranky. So what I did is I just developed a small sensor which was sound tracker, and it will send a tweet to me telling that you know your son is crying, or it will send a WhatsApp message to me that your son is crying, or it will send an SMS to me that your son is crying. So any small minute things you want to do it, it can be achieved using IoT. And uh, you can, uh, you, you can, I would say like, you know, you can go and uh, pick up from tomorrow onwards, you just pick up one problem and you build an IoT solution for that. And I, I, I'll bet that you'll be very happy with that solution. So uh, coming specifically to EV, right? IoT is very, very vast. So now we saw like so much of communication happening between a controller and the BMS and uh, vehicles to the grid and uh, vehicles to uh, you know to the home uh, power and uh, in the v2v and v2g we saw like you know charging from one vehicle to the another vehicle and uh, vehicle to vehicle communication so all this communication is happening through your internet of things where you know your, your gps your speed monitoring your fall alert in in case of a two-wheeler or you met with an accident your vehicle analytics your geofencing your wheel jammer you name it uh, you know, you have to build IoT solution to actually have that data, uh, you know, pushed back to your cloud and uh, showing it like, you know, hey, look at this is what your uh, 
vehicle analytics is. So now since you will be building controllers, since you will be building BMS, building IoT solution around that is not a big task. For example, in uh, at Bima EV, we have built uh, our own solution. Uh, let me emphasize that we are not brought any solution. We have built our own solution. Very like, you know, our vehicles, GPS, speed monitoring and fall alert especially is all, you know, uh, uh, developed and uh, we get all this information on our uh, dashboard. So now vehicle analytics and geofencing is very important. Uh, for example, like, you know, for example, uh, we do a subscription based model. So when my vehicles are running out of Bangalore, I should get an alert telling that, hey, your vehicles are running out. So geofencing is where it comes into picture. Uh, you lock your vehicle and go like, uh, how can how can it stop somebody from stealing it? Uh, say if you're going to use a hub motor, right, uh, or even any motor, right, you can have a, uh, you can design it in such a way that you can jam your wheel so that, you know, the vehicle doesn't move at all. It's like, you know, standing there rock solid. So all these things are, uh, you know, designed when you do your IoT. So even your region that happens, uh, very like, you know, your controller from the BMS is getting that information to push this back onto the cloud to know like how many times on this vehicle Vivek applied the brakes. Uh, you need an IoT solution to be built. Now, state of the charge is good on a vehicle, but what if I'm a, if I'm at my office and I'm uh, I get a call to meet my friend in Indranagar and my office is in uh, uh, Whitefield. So now, uh, before even I start my journey, right? State of the charge is something like you know you can build an IoT solution wherein the battery uh, BMS sends the information to your controller, and the controller in, in turn tells it back to the IoT, and IoT pushes it back to the cloud, telling that. Uh, I just say like, you know, my trip is uh, not home today. I'm uh, re rerouting my uh, trip today via Indranagar. So there only I can see the data that, okay, uh, you can still drive if you're driving alone on the two wheeler. You don't have to worry about the charge. So all these things are going to be designed when you do your design. And all these things are to be captured when you do your IoT solutions. And even the charge compliance, what we talk like, you know, how the vehicles uh, charging happens, whether you want to do DC-DC converter, or you want to use only AC chargers, or you want to have a swap battery, and in the swap battery you want to check. So all this information should be pushed back to the consumer onto a dashboard, or to a cell phone, or to the company, uh, anywhere like you need an IoT solution to be built around that. And here again, like you know, you'll be using so many kind of sensors, and you'll be designing the boards, which will uh, communicate over uh, 3G, 4G, 5G network, or 2G network, or a fallback mechanism for your telecom. For example, like you know, I'm in Bangalore, Tomorrow I go to a uh, you know uh, village nearby where they don't have 4G or 5G. I should be able to fall back on 2G and still send some data which is making sense to me to collect that information. So all these things uh, come into your IoT uh, specifically in EV. Though IoT is like you know very vast and uh, you know you can as I gave an example you can build any solutions uh, using IoT. So once you do all these things, then uh, you know you have to work closely with uh, with your computer. Uh, knowledge to make it available. So you have collected so much of data, right? You're communicating that data. So now you have to integrate them and you should make them available on the cloud through mobile applications or mobile app or dashboard and start collecting data. So once you start doing this, right? Uh, after one year, if the system is completely built and uh, available and running on the roads, you will be able to design your AI and ML. Very like, you know, you can tell, hey, in my vehicle, what is the longest range I can go? In my vehicle, what is the shortest range I can go? In my vehicle, if somebody with 70 kg is driving, what is the range I get? In my vehicle, if somebody is, uh, uh, three people riding who are like, you know, uh, 70 or 80 kg, which comes up approximately 200 kg, what is the range that they can get? So all these analytics can be built onto IoT and that can be pushed onto your uh, mobile app or web applications. Very really like immediately, this data can be transferred. For example, on a bike, when three people sit, immediately it should tell your range will be five kilometers because three people are loaded. I cannot uh, show some wrong data to them telling that, hey, the range is 20 kilometers and after five kilometers you run out of charge and you are like, you know, nowhere in the middle of the city. So all these things, uh, you know, uh, come into the IoT and uh, we have designed our IoT boards and everything. We have, uh, we are uh, pushing, we are using the AWS cloud technology. We have used AirVantage, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, cloud technology as well to, you know, uh, ca capture all this information. And uh, also we are using uh, Sierra wireless chipsets for, uh, you know, doing the IoT solutions wherein we do the communication. And it supports uh, 4G M2M systems and uh, 
it has a fallback of uh, 2G network. So if I go to any any area, like you know, if 4G is not available, I'll try to fall back to 3G, and uh, 3G is not available, I'll fall back to 2G. To, we are not gone beyond 2G because 2G is available at uh, even in the remotest of the location as far as my knowledge goes. So uh, uh, this is something which uh, you know. Uh, pictorically, we have represented like what we are doing and uh, swap stations we have built, they have IoT solutions wherein somebody removes a battery and puts back a battery, we get that information. Battery packs, um, you know, we have a solution built wherein like, you know, state of the charge comes back to us. Controller, as I mentioned, like, you know, again, the motor, uh, motor is like, you know, uh, a little dumb part of the vehicle. So it just, it just communicates back to your controller. Con controller is the guy who actually feeds all the data back using the IoT solutions back to the cloud. And uh, we are also, you know, if you want to build an off-grid uh, charging, off-grid is like, you know, you have a swap station available or you have a charging location which is based on solar. So uh, what happens is like, you know, whenever uh, solar peaks at only a certain period of time. So you need to build a system which will capture that energy and put it back to your swap stations or for charging. And also you can use your wind and uh, solar and what not for doing the charging. But uh, let me, uh, you know, highlight this here, like because many times people ask me, can we build solar panels on a car and uh, use it like, you know, you don't have to charge. So uh, technically, you know, they don't work, though logically they might work. Technically, it's not feasible because of the load capacity and other things do not uh, help you to do that in today's available technology. So uh, other things that we have done is like, you know, we are building AI and ML solutions wherein uh, if, for example, uh, when we, uh, uh, let us take an example of, you know, you build a solution for a company which is into the logistics. So now the logistics, uh, you know, like you, they go from your warehouse to your distribution center. So now if these solutions are built, whenever there is a, uh, you know, departure from the uh, designated routes that they do uh, using AI and ML, you can always alert the companies telling that, hey, these guys are, uh, were supposed to go to the warehouse or from warehouse to the distribution center, but they are like, you know, off the road. Maybe you want to check right away. They'll send an alert to them. And uh, mobile apps, we are, uh, you know, still developing them. It's in the developing stage right now. And GPS is like the very, very basic thing that you can do. So now uh, just to retrospect, you can, uh, you know, you can compare it with an IC engine vehicle so these solutions are not built as of today. They were not feasible. They were not viable because, uh, you know, from the engine, you were not able to communicate back to the cloud. But because of EV, all these things are happening and uh, it's a very exciting phase uh, in the world, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, when you talk of EV, right, it is not only like uh, Bangalore, Karnataka or India. EV is open, uh, you, you know, every country is trying to push the limits and do innovations in this space and uh, the world is uh, you know looking at the bright engineers who can do uh, innovation and other things so that's on the iot so you can see like this is one of our uh, e-bikes which we have built the controller the battery packs the dc dc converters and the iot solution and uh, that's pretty much so next let's move on to the micro mobility uh, uh, you know, I just wanted to touch base on this because like, you know, uh, uh, when you talk of EV, everybody talks of mobility, right? They don't say transportation. They don't say like, you know, uh, they don't use that uh, terminal. They use mobility. They'll say like, you know, personal mobility, shared mobility, blah, blah, blah. So I just wanted to touch base and, you know, highlight you guys so that, you know, when you are in a conversation with somebody in the industry or you go for anywhere, like, you know, you exactly understand what terms when they talk, what exactly they mean. So uh, in micro mobility, like, you know, you can see in the picture, like, you know, various designs, models are available. Uh, you know, it's uh, basically on the two wheeler where, where, like, you know, you have a bicycle, you have kick scooter and you have seated, seated scooters. So we are in the last segment in the seated scooter battery assisted. Now, kick scooters also we have, which we uh, do it uh, now for, uh, you know, small campuses or small uh, factory outlets or, uh, you know, where, like, where there is a controlled environment. Uh, that's where we are operating. We have tied up with another company to do that one. So now, uh, again, coming back to uh, micro mobility, right? So it's basically like, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in mobility, it means like, you know, you should be able to transport a person from first point A to point B. A within the, uh, you know, for whatever the reason that he wants to do, like I want to go to the gym, I want to go to the college, I want to go to office. 
I want to go pick up groceries or I want to meet my friend at my coffee shop. So that's where the mobility comes in. Transport is again a very uh, you know bigger terminology. You can use it for air, you can use it for sea transport or you know railways, everything. So when it comes to mobility, like you know, you should understand that it's for a um, uh, within the city and within a, a predefined uh, you know things that happen uh, commonly, uh, which is like you know going to your uh, college, going to your office, or going home, or meeting friends or coming up. So that's where the term mobility comes into picture there, right? You cannot use the mobility word to, you know, I, I'll put a mobility solution to uh, transfer people from Bangalore to uh, Delhi. Uh, that doesn't make sense. But if I say I'm building a mobility solutions within Bangalore or within Mysore or within, uh, within a, uh, you know, using the kick scooter, uh, we are building a solution within the campus. That makes sense because, you know, it's a limited uh, uh, way of uh, helping people to move around without spoiling the environment. So that's where uh, you know we also fall into the picture. That's where by my is uh, you know trying to address the issues of the last mile, first mile, and uh, short mile commute. So uh, so you can see the kick scooter for the kick scooters. Um, you know I work with my partner in US and we have a patent for the folding technology. So the way we fold even MI uh, kick scooters cannot fold because we hold a patent for them. So that's on it. So uh, this is the last topic for today, where like, you know, I'll just touch base on the upskills for the EV market readiness uh, uh, at a very high level, uh, you know, just to ensure and uh, give you a comfort feeling, which makes you think that, okay, EV, don't confuse it with automotive industry. EV is altogether a new industry, which is getting built. Yes, automotive, because uh, they, we use them on the roads, uh, that makes sense, but that doesn't mean like, you know, uh, uh, other streams cannot enter into these fields. So if you see here, um, you know, I have depicted uh, where who falls into the picture. So I'll just take an example, for example, electronic students, uh, if you take, uh, as we discussed, you know, in the controller, you guys are there in the middle. That means like, you know, you guys are the guys who will design the controller efficiently, which will, uh, you know, communicate with the motor. So now also you, you play a very important role in power electronics, uh, wherein like, you know, you design a lot of stuff around the battery management system and how all the communication happens between the vehicle, for example, even, uh, you know, if your controller is, is capable of even telling you when a headlight was switched on or switched off, when an indicator was put on or put off, all this information can be read in your controller if your design is efficient. And uh, just if you want to upskill yourself, to uh, write IoT solutions, then what you need to do is electronic students need to look at like, you know, uh, as we discussed on IoT, right? Just pick up some problem and build a solution around it. So you know like how IoT solutions uh, work for that. So that way you're upskilling, like, you know, attend webinars or, uh, you know, try to understand like, you know, how, what technologies they use and how an application is built on an IoT wherein which will communicate with the controller and send that ba information back to the uh, uh, cloud. Uh, wherein that information is collected. So, uh, so that way you can see like, you know, each one uh, can uh, fall into various uh, thing. For example, a mechanical guy is uh, specifically, he will be, a, uh, you know, expert in the motor field, but he can always upskill to IoT and app by, you know, understanding uh, how IoT works and how these are all related. And uh, if you see electrical guys uh, are fitting um, between motor and controller because they study about that. They are fitting between controller and uh, battery packs because they fit there. And also in power electronics, they, 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 they learn to a certain extent, but not as extensive as an electronic students. Whereas uh, when it comes to native frame design, you can see mechanical guys or the IP guys who come with a design background play a very important role there. So what happens is like if an electronic student who does the controller design, who knows about motor, who does the BMS design, and who has also done the IoT, so how does he go to the native frame design? You just have to, uh, you know, attend uh, some upskill events or upskill courses on frame designing that happens for an EV so that you get a hang of it. And if that is your passion, you can always pick that up as a mainstream and, you know, you can integrate so that you become a, uh, you know, you do the design and you do the design along with that, you do the, your uh, actual controller, how they function and uh, things like that. So that's on the, you know, skills and where, in which bucket uh, each of the disciplines fall into. And uh, uh, just coming to uh, collaborators with whom we are working. So Relisys is another uh, startup 
which is in the hardware and IoT. So wherein like you know we work closely with them on building our solutions. For example, I said like you know we have built our IoT solutions. So we design everything. We design uh, we, you know we know like what requirements need to go in, what features I need to have. For example, the fall alert. And uh, for one of the uh, for one of the solutions, we are also building an air quality index alert. Wherein like you know these um, IoT solutions will also wherever we drive our bikes. I'll collect the air quality index and I'll push it back to the cloud so that you know I can map it on my using Google Maps or Google API so that you know when when somebody says I want to check how the air quality index is in Bangalore, uh, you know we populate that data and show it to them, telling that hey look the uh, the air quality is uh, good because of the lockdown or uh, various reasons and once everything keep, picks up, we can always show like the air quality is bad in uh, you know in these areas kind of a thing. So the next is uh, Empoise Design Studio with whom we work on the design. So uh, this is uh, another uh, startup from my friend, colleague and uh, he was my engineering batchman who uh, studied along with me. He comes from a production uh, uh, background and he has done the design courses from one of the uh, famous institutes in, uh, in India. So uh, we work with them to do any design. For example, like you know the battery boxes that we are designing, we want to make them more safer. Uh, tamper proof and even the IoT solutions that we build we want to make it waterproof because in India uh, two wheelers are left outside so we wanted to make it IP67 rated where like you know rain, dust, shine, whatever it still communicates and it sends the information to us so we work with them to do uh, those kind of designs and uh, coming to micro mobility like you know as we say as I said we have the kick scooters where we do for campus and other things we have tied up with a company called as LIV uh, wherein they do the deployment and they they have developed the app and the other things for these vehicles and they run the show. We are just like an OEM provider for them. And the software part of it like is completely done in house. Like you know we have uh, uh, interns from computer science background, MCA, and uh, some electronic students also who have a passion for you know building software for this are also working. So uh, they work closely with us and we develop it in house. And for the motor, uh, we are uh, working with uh, physics motors in Bangalore, which is another startup. Uh, we are trying to make it more efficient, as we saw, like you know, like you can achieve a efficiency of 90 to 95 percent. So we are uh, you know, working with them to make the motors more efficient and more reliable, and uh, uh, you know, waterproof, dustproof, uh, region-proof. So all those things, uh, you know, we are working with these uh, collaborators in Bangalore. I think that's pretty much from my side. I think I've bored you guys for almost one hour, 20 minutes. So you guys can go ahead and ask any questions if you have. Hello, uh, sir, I have a question. Sure, uh, uh, sir, can you please uh, state- the best vehicle, sir? Uh, uh, either electric vehicle or 